Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits here, and this is part three of our video series on making a point-and-click adventure game in Unity. We've got our scripts set up for our network of nodes, and now we're going to actually put these into action by um, creating our camera positions and our colliders so that we can click on the different locations and props and go to them. So to get started here, we're going. I'm actually going to go back a little bit and review what I did last video. I kind of rushed a little bit, I think, through wiring up these reachable nodes. So I'm going to quickly show you what I did again here. So the idea is basically that any given like location or prop is going to have other nodes that you might be able to reach from it. So for example, when we're at the table, our view is probably going to be something like this, where we can see the table and these two things. So both of these will be reachable from the table. So that's why I've dragged the blue cube and the red sphere props here, and that's why there are these two reachable nodes. Likewise, now, when you are on the cube, we're going to pretend the view is something like this, where we can't see anything else, so there are no reachable nodes. However, we do here have this location, which is the table, so if we were to zoom out, we would go back to the table. Lastly, for the red sphere, I'm imagining something where we're going to have a view more, something like this, where we're focused on the sphere, but we can still see that cube in the background and would be able to click on it. So we have both the uh, blue cube as a reachable node from the sphere, but then again we still have that back out, backing out um, to the table. So that's quickly um, what we were doing there for, that's our network, that's how we're setting up our network. It's sort of these how you go forward and how you go back. Now we need to, um, I've been kind of showing you here how we're going to have our scene like, oh, we're looking at the sphere or we're looking at the table. We need to be able to tell our camera how to do that. And that's, that involves two things, uh, uh, positioning and rotation of the camera. And that is why we have set up for all of these nodes, the sphere, the cube, and the table, all have this camera position transform. Because what we're going to basically use is we're going to create an empty game object for every node that is going to be positioned in such a way. And then when we go to that node, we're just going to tell the camera, just put yourself in the exact same position as this game object, and that way you're going to be looking where we want you to look. So to start, we're going to create one for the table. And this is a six-step process right now. There's probably more, uh, there's quicker ways we can do this in the future, but for right now, we're just trying to get our prototype of this out. So we're going to do it this way so that it'll work and we can get it up, set up fairly quickly. So the first step is going to be setting up your scene view here. And you're going to want to make sure the scene view is about where you want your camera to look. So this looks pretty good to me right now. We can adjust as we go. Next step is you're going to create an empty game object. And you don't want it, it's eventually going to be um, parented with the table, but right now you're just going to keep it at the same level as the camera. And the reason for this is that once it becomes a part of the table, it's going to be taking its information, like it's going to be the local position, and its local rotation, and we don't want that right now. We want to make sure the camera and this game object are going to have the same uh, relative position and rotation. So we're going to rename this. We're going to call this camera position. You could call it table camera position or give it more a more specific label, but um, it's going to ultimately be childed to the table, so I feel like we don't really need that right now. And make sure this is reset. Make sure you're at 0, 0, 0 to start. So now we've positioned our scene view. We've created our camera position game object. Now what you want to do is you want to click on your camera and you want to go to Game Object, Align with View. You can also hit Control shift f um, on a Windows, or I believe it's the um, Open Apple Shift-F on a Mac. So now we see that our camera is actually getting the exact same shot as our view. Sometimes I find this is a little bit more zoomed out than I want it to be, and it's pretty easy at that point. Now you can move your scene view around, but the camera is where we want it, and you can if you have your uh, gizmo here set to local, you can grab the Z axis here and you can zoom it in a little bit if you want to do that. Once you've got it positioned where you want it to, you're going to go over to your transform, right click, and hit copy component. Lastly, or second to lastly I should say, you are going to then paste the values 
into your camera position. So copying from the transform of the main camera, click on camera position, and then right click and say paste component values. And that gives you the exact same values now in here. If we go camera position, uh, it is switching up a little bit. It's just saying 343 and 16 here, negative 16. It's the exact same positioning. It's just um, 360 degrees difference. But if we look at our gizmo here again, you can see the position is exactly the same. So lastly, we can move this now into our table. It is now part of the table. I'm going to move it above the other nodes. I like to keep the additional nodes at the very bottom of this hierarchy so we kind of keep like things together. And then you just need to drag the camera position to the camera position slot we have. So now that means that um, when we look at this table and we ask its camera position, we're talking about this specific position right here. We're going to quickly do the same thing now for both of our uh, props. We'll start with the cube. I'm going to move my camera view, or scene view rather, sorry. Move it to something like this. I want to make sure that cube's not in or the sphere is not in there because we're not going to be looking at that. That looks good. Click on our camera. Control Shift F aligns that. Yeah, we get a little bit of the shadow there. That's cool. So we will copy that component's values. We will create an empty. Call it camera position. We'll reset this. Not that it really matters, we're pasting the values in, but I like it for cleanliness. And then we're just going to drop that onto the cube. So now the cube has this camera position, which is right here. And again, matches right up with our camera right now. Lastly, we'll do this quickly for our sphere as well. You see there's a little bit of you can do you can create the game object pretty much anywhere in this process. You can do it at the start, in the middle, at the end, as long as it's ultimately going to end up on the sphere and as long as it's a sibling to the camera until it is um, got its values put in. So we'll position this again and like I say for this one we're going to position it something like this so that we can we're focused on the sphere but we can still see the cube behind it and we will click our camera, align the view, and that looks good. So we will copy these values and paste them again into our camera position and drop that onto the sphere. Now we do have to remember, of course, to drag, click on our blue cube and then drag this camera position to it. And likewise, the red sphere, drag its camera position to it. So there, now we have camera position set up. Every, any, any node we have in the scene right now, the camera knows where to go when it's, when it's clicked on, when that node is clicked on. So now what we need to do is set this up so that we can actually detect the clicks on our nodes. Right now, our nodes don't have any way of knowing when we put our mouse over them and click them. Our models have these colliders on them, which they don't really need particularly. We can actually um, delete these if we want to right now. We can remove component and likewise on the cube, uh, remove component because those aren't really doing anything for us right now. What we want is for there to be colliders on the nodes themselves. So how we can do that, we can actually get rid of that on our table model too. How we're going to do this is we're just going to actually click on our node itself. We're going to add a component to each. Now our table is a location node. So when we do a location node, I find it's useful to have actually a pretty big node because say we're like back here, you know, across the room and we can get to the table and we want to make sure we can click on the table. So we want it actually to be a pretty big size here so that we can hit the table. We don't just want it to be the box of the table itself. So I'm going to add a sphere collider for this one. And right now it's based right at the base here. And I kind of like, I do like the idea that it's a dome above the, uh, above the floor versus it just being like a circle. Because then you might click like the corner here and not get anything. But we're going to obviously up the radius of this because right now it's embedded inside the table. So let's make it about a radius of two. That's pretty good because it's actually, uh, 
like I say, it's a little bit above, a little bit to the sides of the table. If we were to click anywhere in here, we will move to that table, and that works out pretty well. So we just need that there, and we can um, be good with that one. For our cube and our sphere, we're going to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit, stay a little bit closer to them. I'll just focus. And so I'm going to add a cube collider, or box collider rather, to this one. Make sure you're choosing box collider and not box collider 2D. They are two different things. And we believe for the size of the, at this point you can actually, it's good to check the actual size of your models for these. So this was 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. So the um, box here kind of has a similar, the center is very similar to the positioning and the size is a similar to the scale. So what we can do is actually, if we were to make, say, this box, the cube model is, sorry, about 0.2 up at its center. So we can do the same thing for our center of our box collider and make that 0.2. So now it's centered on the box again. And likewise, our cube model is 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 in scale. So we can say 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and 0.6. And you see that makes it the exact same size as our box. And that's okay, but I generally like to make colliders a little bit bigger, so there's a little bit of, um, a little bit of room for error, just in case, you know, you meant to be clicking here, but you happen to click just this edge. I feel like you should still get to where you want to go. So I'm going to add another 0 0.05 to each of these, so 4, 0 0.45, 0 0.45, and 0.65, and that gives us a little bit more room there. We'll do the same for the sphere. For the sphere, we'll add a sphere collider. And again, we'll check, double check the uh, sizing we had here. So 0 0.25 and then 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So I'll say a radius of um, 0.25. And if I make this 0.25, that moves it to be perfectly sized. Um, and so we'll just add 0 point, 0 0.025 to it, which should make it the size we want, but it doesn't look like that's doing it. And why is that now? Red sphere, collider, 0.25. Oh, sorry. We're adding 0 0.025, so it should be 0 0.275. There we go. So now again, we've got that a little bit bigger collider than the sphere itself. We can close these up. So now we have it set up where we can click on these and it will detect it, but we now need to actually tell our script to do something with that information. So let's go into our node script in MonoDevelop. And what we can do here, so I'll just close this. I will make this full screen, zoom in so you guys can see what I'm, oh, not that one, we want this to zoom in. You guys can see what I'm doing. And we're going to just add a quick script to this. And we're going to call this void on mouse down. And this is one of um, Unity's pre-built pre um, callbacks, which is basically it says whenever the mouse is clicked on this, we, were, we are going to activate this, um, this action, this function. So on mass down, we are going to want to do something with our camera. We're going to want to move the camera to that camera position. So in order to do that, we need a, um, an access to the camera, which is a, right now it's our main camera, so it's fairly easy to do. But I'm just going to say camera.main, which is a very helpful, it's a static um, it's a static function, so you can get it from anywhere, or a static um, accessor, really. And you can um, use it to get the main camera from any script. Just hit camera.main. And then what we'd like to do is make it, set it so that its position and its rotation are equal to our um, camera position, which we can do actually pretty easily. If we say camera.main.transform, dot position is equal to 
the position of our, not our nodes transform, but of our actual camera position, which conveniently is a transform. So we can just say camera position dot position. And then we can do the same thing, camera dot main dot transform, and then do the rotation equals camera position dot rotation. So basically when we click on our collider here, we are going to go to our camera position and have our camera match its position and rotation. Click save on that. So now if we go back to our scene and hit play, I'm gonna zoom, we're gonna actually take our, we're gonna zoom out on the scene here and we're gonna move our camera to this position. So again, I'm gonna say game object align with view. So we're starting off far away from the table. When I click, we should move to the table. So let's hit play, click, and there we go. We are moved right to the table. Now there's gonna be an issue here. If I click this, this cube or the sphere, it's not going to work right now. Why is that? That is because if we look at our table, we see that our collider for the table is surrounding these two colliders. So when we try to click, we're just actually hitting the table every time. We're not able to ever get into there. So we're gonna to need to do a little bit more sort of fancy code work in order to tell our network that when we're at a position, its collider doesn't really matter anymore. And likewise, if there are nodes out there that aren't reachable, their colliders don't really matter anymore either. So in our next video, we're gonna get into kind of fine tuning this network so that where we are is, um, is taken into account and that will affect which nodes we can actually interact with. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.